How many bags of sugar would I have to part with to buy one of these? Um, how many bags of sugar can you get for half a million quid? Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> god. Let's Quite move on. a lot on. of sugar, I don't know. Honestly. Well, you're not special, have you? I'm pro drive, Bambury. I didn't mean to call that Dave Richards, Dave Lapworth, a Whiskers, or America. I bet of any, really. A cow smower. Come in. Good afternoon. The door's always open. <laughs> How are you? All right, good to see you. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fantastic, thank you. Good, good. I Have am a seat. fantastic. Yeah. What a wonderful sight you've got here in Pro Drive. Hey, this is an impressive table, isn't it? Yeah, Not made by a rally driver, is it? Obviously, because you wouldn't put some tappers in it, would you? Exactly. They vibrate bit, out. It's a bit basic. Actually, it is fantastic, it's, though. Eh? But it's, huh? uh, yeah, so there we go. So, welcome, welcome to ProDrive. Thank you very much. An incredible CV you've got. 29 when you won the World Championship. Yep, that's uh, that, with Harry. That sort of moulded your future and your want, I would imagine, well, did I it? I think it was the end of an era. That, that, to me, you know, I think I've got sort of... You know, I think you can split your life up into certain eras of periods of time, if you like. I sort of had my early formative days where sort of, you know, obviously you go to school, you do studying, did my accountancy. Then I had a window of time where I was rally co-driving for about 10 years, I suppose, full time. Um, then that stopped. Then we sort of built the business up. And now we're sort of consolidating and doing lots of different things. And it's, uh, uh, I suppose, each one has its great appeal. And it's different, it's very different. And now is even more different because I'm off doing sort of, I take over as chair of the FI Foundation this year. I've got sort of sitting on the World Council doing other things in on a sort of, on a rather than operational, it's more in the background of sort of motorsport and uh, quite interesting. And I drove in here earlier on and I saw the Haas Formula One team down the road and, and uh, Whiskers, do you remember Whiskers from America? He is with us. And he said to me, he said, you know what this is lacking? Pro Drive Formula One. Yeah. And I said, well, yeah, but he's dabbled in that. You've dabbled in that. Why, why aren't you in Formula One then? Um, we had, uh, uh, yes, as you know, I'd run for two Formula One teams. We finished second to Ferrari in, uh, in 2004. Um, it was an interesting period of time. And we did look at going into Formula One again in um, 2008, nine. Uh, there was a strong possibility we would have done it then. Um, the, the one thing that I learned about Formula One, you never do it half-heartedly. Those people who just sort of think, oh, this will be an interesting experience, go into it and sort of, um, without 110% commitment, you're not going to succeed. You're not going to survive, let alone succeed. So uh, once I got through that period and I said, mm, I just, I don't think I could do that again. It's, um, uh, it, it was so demanding on me, the family, everybody around me. And... Um, it's a bit like um, if you went back to medieval times, you, you got on your horse, you got all the armour and everything, and you went off to the Middle East and the Middle East, off on the Crusades. And off you went with your army and your people, and you came back a year later. And that's what you have to do with a Formula One team. You cannot think of anything else. And if you do, you're going to be left to one side. No chance. And, and the competition is so strong, isn't it? You know, you need, it's, it's like most things, you need two or three years to be in there to, to understand it all yeah. before you can be competitive. Oh, you've got it, you... And that's just going to sap millions uh, and you, millions and millions. You've got to do that. And it's, uh, but it's, uh, I sort of thought I'd done it. I hadn't quite. Um, so if you ask your previous question, what, a, what do I look back on? I think, you know what, another year in there would have sort of probably seen us through to the next stage. We'll have a little walk around sh shortly, but I'm going to ask you one question. Motorsport UK, mm -hmm. British Rally Championship. Mm -hmm. Give me the answers. I don't know the answers. You're the man. You said four years ago in Newtown that you were going to sort it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and you know what? We're still sorting it out. I know out. you're trying. And, I'm, and I, you know what? Um, we, we had a big, uh, we've had a recently a review with lots of people feeding their input to it. We're sorting, sifting through it. In fact, I've, I'm going to a dinner tonight, Motorsport UK, with the board, and we've got a meeting tomorrow. Um, I don't worry just about that. I worry about the World Rally Championship yes. as well. Yes. Um, if there was any form of motorsport that is, um, is um, really at the, the sharp edge of an environmental challenge, mm. it's rallying. We're in the forests, we're in... The, that wonderful natural environment that we all love, um, but 
you know, I know how people feel about us competing and racing our cars. I took um, Hugh Chambers and Colin Clark uh, around the stages of Rally Bay Kerridigia. Yeah. So I had uh, a couple of hours with them week last Saturday, and I really grilled, you know, Hugh. Um, and he exactly said the same, you know, he said that the, the, the difficulty to get sponsorship in and to engage with people when you're in the forest, he said, even, even now on the public, close public roads is better but for, for, from forest rally and he says it's so difficult. Roads, I think that's a great event and I think it's going to go on, hopefully European Championship and I know there's an event planned for North Wales as well yeah. that, uh, coming in future. Yeah. So I think that is an opportunity for us. I think we've, um, we've made some mistakes in costing ourselves out of a lot of these uh, yeah. events. Technically, World Rally Championship, we've got these R1 cars, which are so expensive yeah. now, whereas we should have just gone R2 and just really flooded the market. You'd have a lot more entries. If that You'd have eight, eight manufacturers involved. I think you would. But then you've got seven losers on Monday. That's the other thing somebody pointed out to you me. Know, yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. You, you start with... You, you always end up... If you do the mathematics over... A, a, I think a, we did it once over a, sort of the whole period of the World Rally Championship. The average number of manufacturers in the World Championship hovers around three. Always does. Yeah. Because you sort of you get to five or six, they can't do it wins, they drop off. Yes. You get to two or three and everyone thinks, oh, there's an opportunity to come in and they come back in again. Yeah. But they only come in if it's affordable and it's technically reasonable. And today we've just gone too far. It's, got, it's not, not affordable. Um, so that not to say we've got a, the British Championship, we're trying a whole range of new ideas. I'm going to come up to the Cambrian and have a look around. I've got a few ideas there we want to look at. I mean, the last time the British Championship was successful was when it was F2. Yeah. Really, Correct. and in fairness, everybody was against that. Oh, oh you know, we still have to have the four-wheel drive um, Group N cars. We still have the Irish boys coming over in four-wheel drive cars. But predominantly, manufacturers, with five manufacturers involved, and that's when it was at its strongest. Yeah. And I can remember when Balestra killed off the Group B cars. We're all up in arms about it. It was the best thing could have yes. happened. Um, the other thing that, that I, sp I spoke to um, uh, who James is about, I said, look, the, the MSA are sitting on a pot of gold. I don't know, what is it, 7, 11, 10 million, it differs to whatever. Invest some of that money in Rally Bay Kennedy and get it up to the status for the World Championship. If you don't do nothing, we're going to get nowhere. We've that, that pyramid, yeah. that pyramid we've got in motorsport of teaching, you know, teaching all the marshals and all the... Yeah. We haven't got a pinnacle event. Yeah, I totally agree with the principle of what you're saying, but remember... We have licence holders that are not just rally licence yes. holders. They're racing licence yes. holders, they're participants in hill climbs, in rally cross. And if we say we're going to spend all our money on this particular field... We don't want it all. Or just even a, but I'll tell you why we need it as well. Here's another point. We need a good pot of reserves in case we come up against insurance yeah. issues. Yeah. Now, you saw what happened in Ireland yes. a couple of years ago. Yes. They just had to cancel all rallying yes. because they couldn't get insurance. And the road, so, road races are still fighting that now. Until well, the we've got a big pot of money sitting there as a reserve, so we can take big excesses on the insurance. We can actually, with, from a point of strength, and I managed to get our insurance policies always with a two-year lead time now, so even if they cancel it now, we still have two years to go. Right, OK. Well, you have to, so, so what you're telling me is you're trying. We're trying. Okay. And I won't stop trying. How could I? The come other thing from you Wales, need to do. I come from Wales, <laughs> coming with my background. To, I, it, it's the saddest thing I can ever see, not having our World Championship back in. Yeah. But you helped me get the Welsh Government to support us. Let's work on oh, this together. He's just made everything 20 mile an hour this week. That's not so going to help. No, it's not going to help. Um, it's going to increase all the road section times. But the one thing I said to Colin as well is, and to, um, and to him is, we don't know this. We don't know you're trying. Tell us. I'll come to Newtown again and tell you. Let's go and have a look round. Fantastic. It's a fantastic facility you've got it's, here. It's not bad. Here we build all the Astons. Yes. Probably, and these are customer racing cars. Yeah, that's right. We'll probably build 100 uh, a year, something of that sort of order. Race cars, GT4, GT3 cars. And that's, they go around the world, they do. They're all over the all place. Over the They'll world. be just literally everywhere. We'll be in, uh, this last weekend, we had two races in America. We had one in Japan. You yes. support them races yeah. as well, then, so you've got a, a fleet of technicians. Uh, and well, not a fleet of them, but they'll, be, they'll have an engineer going to support them. Here we're building the P25. Uh, as I say, they've got 25 of them now, and they're all sort of being built. They're all sold. And all sold. So, so. Fantastic. And then building the Dakar cars over oh, there. Oh, they're, they're fascinating. That's fascinating. Uh, that's... I just can't get over. They're carrying half a tonne of fuel. I know. It's a lot. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, 500 litres of fuel. Yeah. And it's... Um, this is our second generation of this car. Yeah. Um, and the third one now will be a sort of quite a significant Will that step be a forward. petrol engine car or will that oh, be yes, a be electric petrol. car? No, it'll be petrol. petrol. Yeah, petrol. Twin turbo petrol with a Renault engine. 
Fantastic. Well, that's interesting. But the engineering on them is 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 it's pretty it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it is, isn't it? What was interesting as well, the parts are interchangeable from side to side, and everything. so everything can You've be got changed. You've got to think of serviceability. Yes. You're in the middle of the desert. Yes. You're miles from anywhere. Yes. You've got. Um, you know, the drivers are very good at doing things themselves. I'll tell you what, Seb Lowe is most impressive. Is he? Oh, he and his co-driver for changing things on the car and just that never give up attitude. What about Carlos Sainz, they're still going at his age? I Incredible, I, huh? I, I joke with Carlos about it. I was speaking to him last night after his son won in, uh, in the recent Grand Prix. So he's, he's been very proud of that. Oh, very much so. And he was... Uh, no, we keep in touch regularly and we'll see him in Dakar. Let's go a bit closer oh, and have a look at your cars then. Says. So um, this is where it all started then. Did you ever think really when did. you built this car that, you know, it would go on to what it has today? I've never imagined it. There were 14 of us. And that was the start of ProDrive. Yeah, we were in Silverstone, at right. a little lock-up garage in Silverstone, a tiny place. This was the very first car that we built. Paul sent us the cars and they said, this is just ready to rally. <laughs> said, OK, fine, let's take it out to the desert. Well, it, it, it broke in half and we still won the event. <laughs> But when we got it back, David said it's in, it's in bits. It's just it's knackered. So we actually had to start to rebuild the whole car. David redesigned it. Did, we learned a lot about the Porsches, and we did. Um, we won a cup, won the Middle East Championship out there. We were fourth on Acropolis with a with a Porsche, which is quite incredible. Successful. And the plan was to go into the World Championship with a Porsche. Yeah, well, the plan was we were going to go Group B, which was the 959. Yeah, yeah. But then when we saw the car. Um, we didn't realise how big the damn thing was and how sort of cumbersome it would be. And Porsche were rather slow in bringing it to, to the fore. And then, of course, um, uh, Group B was banned, so we sort of we were just ahead of ourselves. And uh, we moved to to and, the BMW then. And Austin Rover obviously had built that uh, Metro well, that 6 was, Yeah, that was... And that was a, a, a season you did with Jimmy McCree. Yeah? We did. The car yeah, that's him. Jimmy's car running the British Championship. I think we finished second that year with Jimmy. I think uh, we had a, quite a few mechanical problems with the car. It's a fascinating car, though, isn't it? That it's stood the, the tread of time and it's still iconic, isn't it? It's ugly as hell, though, isn't it? It is, isn't it? And you open the door and it just looks like an old Metro inside, doesn't it? You know? It does, it does. But you see them out there. And I, I saw one at the weekend. I was down on hill climb down in Cornwall and they, somebody brought one out there and it's uh, they're still, as you say, an mm -hmm. iconic looking car. Watch this then. This is our simulator. This is a, a product that we've just produced. Somebody told me that your wife wanted a piano and you wanted a simulator and this was created yeah, you've in got between it. the two. Well, you got it about right. She said you can't have a simulator in our house because they're just ugly as hell. They look like bits of Meccano. So I said, well, let's design one that looks a bit you better. Brought, so it. was this in the Rich, Richard's household for a while? No, we still haven't got it in the house. never got that far, never right. Got that far. <laughs> then we got the bicycle as well. Ah. So this is, uh, this is our lightweight bicycle. This one's an electric one, actually, so it's ah. not, not quite so lightweight, but the... Um, the uh, and you just you build and design this here in, 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 yeah, yeah. in house? it all in house. Um, so we've got... Um, How much is one of these? The electric one is probably um, £4,000. £4,000. And the lighter version, without the electric, is 6.9 kilos. Right. So it's the lightest folding bike in the world. This started off with a, a company that we've acquired and, uh, and... So the battery's in there and the, mo the motor's no, no, in the, the hub? Battery. No, everything's in the hub. Every the battery's in the hub as well? Everything's How in the hub. How do you charge it then? It does itself. And you plug it in. Self-charging Well, it's got, regen, it's got regen, but then you plug it in as well to charge it at right. night time. So it's uh, oh, great for the kids. Hey, you saw that first on Howard in the Garage. Self-charging bike. <laughs> Come on. Now, let's go and see some proper cars. I must hasten to add that you had to send this to Wales to be rebuilt. You're so right. But huh? I sent it to the very same person who built it the first time ah, round. So was it John O'Connor. Ah, right, OK, yeah. John O'Connor works down there in, yeah. uh, at Viking Motorsport with Phil. Is it as special as you remember it? It's exactly to the absolute detail identical. And Ari came and drove it, and he said it was like stepping back in time. And it is. Uh, every little detail we've gone into it, even to the point they were looking for some special pop rivets because apparently the latest pop rivets, the new ones, are not the same as the old ones. Right. And he had to look on the internet to try and find to pop, find rivets to, pop rivets to do some of the fuel tank and things. Fantastic. But it's, um, no, it, it, we've, we don't get it out very often, but occasionally, I must say, I actually come and sit in it sometimes and just. I'm just in, very interested, you know, the, the seat is so low mm. um, and, and not a lot of protection in the side of the seat from, no, you know, from the, when you were thrown from side to there's side. There's nothing in there, there's nothing in there. And we look back now and the safety standards and things... What's your favourite memory of this car then? What do you remember? Um, Acropolis Rally, we won it the, the second year, we won it in 1980 and then we won it again in 81. And I have to admit that it was a lot easier in 81 than it was in 80. 
in 1980, it was a sort of, I think we had 17 punches or something crazy. But when we got an 81 with this car, it was sort of, it seemed a bit of a cruise, quite frankly. And I think, I don't remember which events this did. I think it probably did Thousand Lakes as well, this car. And we won Thousand Lakes as well, which that is Pretty special else. in, a, in Finland with a fin. And the, the god of the fins, really, and, and in fairness. To, and the speeds involved are just horrendous. We, there was one stage, and during practice, we practiced it a lot. And Ari said, when we get to this um, milk churn thing on the left-hand side, which is by a farm, uh, do you think we can take this flat, this jump? I said, I don't know, it doesn't look flat to me. And he said, no, all right, we'll, we'll see on the day. If I'm feeling, feeling brave, we'll take it flat. If I don't, we won't. And um, we practiced it quite a bit in practice, and we thought we could just about do it. The rally car, they put the light stalk the wrong way round. So when we came over the jump, and we did take it flat, and landed, the lights all went out. And we're in pitch black. Because you'd, the, the, the impact had knocked the light switch down. Light switch went down, went pitch black, and we're heading for a lake, and a 90 degree left. How we ever got round it, I will never know to this day. But that was one of the miracle close accidents we've ever had. How difficult was Ari to navigate for? Was he a difficult character? Was he, uh, was he placid or was he... Because uh, oh. he's, quite, he's quite highly strung, isn't he, you know? I wouldn't say he's highly strung. He, he's, um, you know, we're, we're both young. I look back now and, you know, we had our... 20, you were 29. How old was he then? Yeah, we're identical age. Oh, right, We've okay. got three months between us. And he's... Um, we were... Um, uh, it was big pressure, you know, at that age. We had all the sponsorship. We had the sort of, you know trying to win a world championship it's not easy and uh, I look back now we we did have our fallouts and we did have our great successes um Colin McRae yeah did you find him a challenge did you find him hard work he was some boy wasn't he yeah he was very challenging did you put up with him did you put up with him because he was so good I just liked the attitude he, he reminded me of Harry quite frankly he was very similar to Harry in many respects um it was all or nothing and uh, you could never fault him for trying harder than anybody else, and the talent was just extraordinary. What about when he dis disobeyed the team orders in Spain? What was your... What, what he did didn't you... disobey team orders. He didn't? I thought he was told to let Carlos win. Oh, that, yeah, but he did eventually let him pass. <laughs> so eventually it all worked out It all the worked day. out in the end. It, all it was all made up for TV, was it's it? All, it's all... <laughs> <laughs> I is. wish it was. <laughs> but it... <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a pretty fraught time, but it, we got over it. Yeah. And uh, the great thing is we, uh, we became good pals again yeah. afterwards. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in later life, we, we got together again and we were all sort of great I, friends. I spoke to Jimmy about this a couple of years back, and I said, do you think that, um, you know, Colin, he was massive in America, mm -hmm. and they didn't really realise how, you know, global it was, like, and, and, and the, the game and, and, and all that. And, and Jimmy just, he didn't, you know, he, he said, I, I never, ever dreamt that it would be this big like. Oh, it's a phenomenon. It was, and I probably never to be seen again, certainly in the world of rallying. I and see. it's questionable, as it, would it ever have happened if he hadn't died, you know what I mean? If he was, if he was alive... Oh, but come on, have no, 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 he was a hero before then. Yeah. He was a hero from, uh, you know, my kids looked up to him and it was just, uh, and anywhere you went, it was, uh, uh, he was just very special. The game did it for him as well, that helped. But his flamboyant style, you, I, I still get goosebumps when I look at that film of him coming down through Bunnings yes. in, uh, in Australia. There's probably a picture That's of a it picture there somewhere. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there we go. Yeah, I mean, it's so sad that both our world champions, which you groomed, mm -hmm. have both passed away. They were both the British uh, world champions. I've got a picture on my study wall at home, and there are four people uh, with myself in the picture. Uh, it's all stood by our cars, and there's, uh, there's Colin, there's Richard, Possumborn, who's yeah. also dead, yeah. and Carlos Saints and myself. Oh. And Carlos and I still keep in touch yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. yeah. That's your blast into Formula One then? Yeah, that's, that's a successful car with Jensen. Fortunately, Ferrari were a little bit better, but uh, Jensen was on great form. Honda engine worked well. We'd switched to Michelin tyres, which was the answer as well. So we got the tyres to work, and uh, it was an extraordinary season. Uh, it just, you know, sometimes, as you say, you think, can't do anything wrong. No. You get those seasons, don't you? Occasionally, and you just... I tell you what, they don't happen often, so you just enjoy them. Fantastic. So when did you move in here? 2015? Seven years ago, yeah. Seven years. Yeah. It seems like a long time ago, but... It, and this was purpose-built? It was, yes. It's, um, it, it's... Was it built for you, then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
it's um, it's now we built an, here we've got another the electrical side but we've got another company up in Telford where we've got 36 people up there working on doing all the wiring looms we're going to have to do a lot of moving around this year because we just this year is a big growth year and you see some of the cars we're building here so I saw I saw one of these outside earlier. What are these then? Which these these Aston Martins? These are Aston Martins. This is how the Aston Martin comes to us. Right from it comes from the factory. It's a bare shell. Right. You see the bare shell over yeah. there. Then we put in the roll cage and everything else, and and then it goes the the roll cage and all the, the hard piping and everything. Then it goes to our paint shop in Milton Keynes, right, where it's painted, and then it'll come back into the body build. But we will build a hundred of these a year now, something of that sort of order. Uh, race cars, GT3, GT4s. So it's uh, churn them out. And, then... and Aston Martin, people want that name. Oh yeah. So we, we've done we've done over 20 years now. We've been 20 years doing all GT cars. Right. I forget how many we've built during that time. So this is a this, this is, is the, a P25. This is the P25. The I basic... didn't realise that's Kevlar. Yeah, yes. Yeah. All carbon. The boot lid, the roof, the bonnet. Only the doors stay as metal. So it uh, all gets put together, and then it goes into our paint shop over in Milton Keynes, where it gets painted. And then it comes from, what about getting bits for these, then? Is, is, is bits plentiful? Apart from the shells, now engines and gearboxes and all that kind of yeah, stuff. We, or is that stuff that you build in-house? We've got a lot of it in-house, and we can, uh, we can source a lot of the parts from America still. So it's not bad. They were massive in America, Subaru. Oh, yeah. We'll go through and see the engine shop now. It's, um, Hi, how you doing? It's all fairly quiet in here at the moment by the looks of it. There was a so what have we got? P25 That's engine That's the yeah, Subaru. Uh, don't know what that is. That's a Vulcan, yeah, Aston Vulcan. Vulcan. That's a, one of their sort of not high performance race cars. And then there'll be. Uh, do you build these? Do you build these completely in here? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you dyno them? In, in dyno here. next door. Do you? Yeah, we'll go to. Have you ever had one blow? No, the arc engines don't well, blow up. Better than that. <laughs> Never blow up. Come on. I, I went mean. to the um, I went to the Bentley factory and I went in there and I asked that question, and he said, "Yeah." I said, "What was it like? It was like an atom bomb going off?" He said. Now we do. Um, we've got some. Of, you know, a lot of our cars now will be 30 years old. Yes. So they bring the engines back and we rebuild them. We've got all the expertise. Some of the guys here have built the original ones. I don't know, Dan's not here at the moment. Yeah, he's, 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 he's out back he's somewhere. Donors. Okay. But they've sort of, you know... Hey, look at the length of that belt. That must be six foot long, is it? <laughs> huh? Yeah. I only pull these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the water... Must be an alternator somewhere over the there. The water pump sits there. Alternator's over there. AC pump there. And what's that out of, did you say? Aston Martin Vulcan track day car. So we made 24 cars, 26 engines. Then How many bags of, bags of sugar to buy one of them? Uh, about almost a two hundred thousand pound for the engine. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, eight hundred and forty horsepower. Eight hundred and forty horsepower. Seven liter V twelve. Seven litre V twelve. But we've done the uh, we did Ferrari, the five fifty Ferrari. Yes, yeah, so and the there's one in the corner over there just being rebuilt. People send them back to us for rebuilds. And those the last Ferrari, we built that in two thousand and three. It sold at auction for seven million dollars in Pebble, Pebble Beach this summer. The, the car. The car. The computer. But it had a new engine from us. That made all the difference. Yeah, all the I see a weight of a water pump. Where's that coming from then? I'm just building it up now. You're building it here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. You don't have to send away for it, like. So. Just a reminder. Not E and M Factors or nothing like that, though. No. Fascinating, guys. Really is. We're, we're having carte blanche today, boys. Aren't we? Huh? No holds barred. Here we're doing all this sort of manufacturing side, so you know we can make. In-house, the composites business is in Milton Keynes. Yes. So another 180 people over there doing composites, and then, but here we're doing all the metal, metal work here. You've got, you've seen, you've seen fabrication. Yes. Now we're doing all the machine, machining work in here as well. So it's um, massive, massive investment in machinery here. Mm -hmm. Let alone, you know, these machines are. Yeah. Must be, must be millions of pounds yeah, of investment are, in here. Are, yeah. But, we, to make these, you know, to make these... Well, like we make everything ourselves. Fascinating. That's from a solid billet, and that's a front hub for a... Uh, that'll be for either an Aston Martin or Dakar car. Probably the Aston Martin, I would think, at this stage. Yeah. And it just goes through a number of processes. 
different to come out like that. Yeah, well, that's it's a long way off being finished yet. You, know, you can see an array of the various parts. Of we'll various make. parts that you've already made. Yeah. Uh, here's a here's a sample up right there. Oh, that's kind of the finished product. That's then. the finished product. That'll that's be the, the upright. That's a small bearing. I don't know what that one is. Yeah. That looks like a wheel hub, actually, doesn't yeah, it? It is, it is. Uh, relatively small compared to the Dakar ones. Come on, let's go and look at the engineering side. Oh, we've got the engineering seen... shop yeah. now. We're going to... This is an aviation project we're working on. What, to carry uh, parts for it, the aviation world? Hydrogen. Uh, ah, right. Aviation business. So here we've got uh, all the engineering side. This is sort of mainstream uh, engineering. This is not the... Um, Motorsport side at all. This is just generally. So, what would you be doing here? What would you be producing? We'll be doing, as an example, we'll be doing work for uh, aerospace. We'll be doing work for military. Uh, we're doing mainstream work for car manufacturers. Um, working on. And would know, that be work that they don't want to do themselves, or outsource? Well, they work just outsource. Or? A lot of people outsource things you'd be very surprised about. It's sort of you're not. Uh, you know, we get all sorts of interesting projects come along. Um, you know, we've got. Uh, 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 quite a wide variety of things going on at any one time. And you're recognised in the most, in automotive industry as, so, as, yeah. as market leaders now. Then, not, so. Well, not market leaders, but we're sort of certainly recognised as being innovative. Right. You know, we've got sort of... Uh, so if a manufacturer wanted something uh, looking at or designing rather than yeah, doing employing the people to do it themselves, exactly. they come here. They come to us. So, uh, and we've got a young team of people and it's sort of, uh, you know, it's... Uh, Fairly it's a typical. Big power on there. Yeah, a big powwow of uh, just discussions of uh, stand up meetings so they don't stay there all day. <laughs> That's. Uh, <laughs> so. Well, this is the bike department. That's where they build. We're just about to redo this whole area where they're going to build a new area for bikes and for the simulator. Um, so we're just doing that at present. So. And the trophy cabinet. Well, just they're everywhere. We just spread them out. Everyone, everyone's part of the success story, so the trophies need to be shared around. And it's as much success here in the engineering group as it is in the motorsport team. So it's uh, yeah. No, they've got to feel part of the success. Fascinating. And then, oh, we're back in the uh, we're back in the uh, back in the main yeah, workshop. We we'll just go through to the engineering, uh, the motorsport yeah. engineering side, if you like, and just have a lots of old faces you'll know. Oh, there. that's in, in the yeah the, the engineering shop, that's the through here. shop. So here we're doing all the composites uh, prep work for the cars. Don't get any ripples on it now. That's an art in itself, isn't it? It is. Uh -huh. It is. Yeah. From a from a company point of view, people want to be involved and want to work in Pro Drive. Yeah, we get a queue of people. If we, have if you? we advertise for places, we get, we get for what, apprenticeship. What do you we offer them on top of that? Then is there good pension? Uh, ah, just normal things, but it's just an exciting place to be, and you know where you're part yeah. of the success story. The old face, you'll know. Old face. I spoke to Alan earlier on. Fascinating place. Fascinating. Just wait one. It's the first time you've been here. It's the first time I've been here. First oh, time I've ever been site. to Pro Drive, yeah. Oh, I didn't right, even okay. go to the new. I came to the old site once. Yeah. Years ago. Years ago, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. No, it's fascinating. It's, this Very is, impressed. This is like a different way of working because we're all together in the yeah. same place now. Yeah. So rebuild yeah. engine shops. Yeah. All. yeah. So it is slightly different. It's brought it all together. It is amazing. Incredible, you know. Yeah, it's quite. Uh, it's got a, there's a few little changes, but it, it's generally it's getting the right. getting there now. And the projects, you know, the projects are so interesting, aren't they? You know, it can be, you know, you may have to do the same thing all the time. Yeah. You know, it's a different, a different environment, a different sport as well, you know? Well, the, the Dakar project's completely Yeah, different. I can imagine, you know, In yeah. terms of the operation yeah. side of it, the yeah. truck side yeah. of it, you know, the logistics side of that are hugely challenging everywhere. Are you involved directly in that? <laughs> yes, in the operations yeah. side, after all are the operations you? side. Uh, look, after all the operations side of that. And of course, we built a lot of it during COVID. Right. So, you know, we uh, even our team flight for the first year we went to Dakar, while well, the flights were cancelled two days before, we had to ring David up and say, hey, we've got a bit of a problem here. <laughs> and uh, anyway, we, we've got to wait there. We got, we got, there. got, we got, we got there. We got, yeah, we chartered our own yeah. plane from Bahrain. So, 
yeah. challenging in every way. But we're all right. Fasc we? Fascinating. It is, it is quite interesting. Nice to see you, Alan. He's been with you years. 30 years. He started in R.E.D. Yeah, that's right. 30 years with us. Yeah. 30 years. Yeah. And Lappy must be one of the longest... Um, he's 40 years. One of the longest serving yeah, he's members. he's the same as me. Here's the man, technical director, David Lapworth. Been here since 1984. Correct. Incredible. It is yeah. incredible, isn't it? Life, yeah. like a life, te like a it, life sentence. It feels like a lifetime. But it all started in there with a the Porsche yep. and the Metro 6R4 in Group B. Yep. And then you went to, to BMW then, we, then. So, yeah, we filled in a year with the 6R4. Yeah. And then somehow David managed to do a deal with BMW. But one of the most notable successes was Snyers in the Isle of Man. Yep. In this Cricket and Co. Yep, that's um, right. Livery car. Yep. I remember. Yeah. Snyers, and who was the co driver? Danny Coolbunkers? Sounds about right. Uh, yeah, that was you're, right. You're, that was an epic performance. It wasn't was it? a great one. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. He, he, was... he won first stage to last stage. I think he was there three weeks practicing, but he still had to drive the car, didn't he? He still had to drive And the he car. showed the British Championship that this yep. was the potential car to do well on tarmac. Yeah, no, I mean, it turned out a really good project and a stepping stone to that one. Right. But this, yep. wasn't this very stiff on the rear? No. Didn't it, it would never have worked as a forest car, though, would it? Uh, we did. We did take it. We did a. We did a, um, a year of the. What do they call it? The, the two-wheel drive world championship. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we we did take it on gravel. Clearly, it wasn't competitive against the four-wheel yes. drive cars. Yeah, it was never going to be. It was wasn't it? competitive as a two-wheel drive. Car. And what's the engine in here then? It's a. a, six, a it's a the same engine basically that was in the touring car. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. And. and the DNA of this car is really shared with the World Touring Car Championship. And that era. was the, the Sitner years. The Sitner years for us, but um, people like you know, Chicotto and whatever in, um, in Germany and the World Touring Car Championship, they share 90 something percent of their DNA with this car. So there's a different version of the engine in the rally car. This, make, but this particular car, though, this, this, this oh, you know, has, you're has catch me out no, I mean, it has, people have a great affinity for these cars, don't they? They, yeah. they really do. I know Christian, Christian Lorio has a couple yeah, of yeah, them, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. there's guys Sorry. in Ireland got them. I thought there's, you were going to start quizzing me No, 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 about this particular car, no, no. But they do, yeah. they did, they did yeah, have, they did have, they had a massive effect on people. There's the actual car, look, in the Isle of Man. Yep. So you so went from, from, from um, BMW then so to BMW the start to that. Of, of, so of the relationship we're with running, Subaru. We're running the BMWs on the World Championship yeah. in the two-wheel drive class. Yeah. And Japan are looking for potential partners. Subaru and Japan are looking for potential partners. They thought from the brilliant professional job we were doing of running that car yeah. that maybe we could be... The, and how long did that relationship last, that Subaru so road the, drive? So we started in 89, so 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. Fast, fantastic. Yeah. And that yeah. went through legacy to start with, obviously. Not yeah. the ideal choice for a rally car, surely. Uh, yeah, probably but not only the what they had. But a very good choice is what they had. Um, they were a perfect fit for us. You know, we, we were desperate to find a manufacturer to take us to the I've world championship. I've got to ask this question. So did you we consider were going to say the, yes. Did you consider the pickup? <laughs> no. Never. No, no. It wasn't no, even considered. They, they, to be fair, they had a plan to go to the world championship with the legacy. With the legacy. That was never a discussion. There was never a discussion about which car would you choose or whatever. It was, do you think you could win, you know, compete on the world rally championship with this car? The answer was obviously yes. Can we have a look under the body? Because um, obviously this was a flat four engine, wasn't it? It was, yep. Which was completely different to um, anything else that had ever been seen in the World Championship, wasn't it? There you go. There's a, there should be a... Pretty spray. special. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, clipped in there. You've got to look at that. that. Even, even a pin to hold the, the doobry down. Incredible. There you go. So pistons are going that way, aren't they? Yep. They're not going up and down. No. no so was, was, this a, was this a, a good engine and a good starting uh, point for...? The weakness of this car at this stage is the engine. Right. At this stage, because it's got a tiny little turbo. Right. Uh, considering the power we needed to be competitive. In your mind, what was the most successful result for this car then? 
What's your most notable result? I mean, the main I... notable result was it, when, was it won New Zealand with Colin. Right. I think overall we would regard this project of, with the legacy as a success. Right. It took us from nowhere to winning, winning a world, world championship, championship, yeah, a world yeah. championship rally in three years. But the story of the Impreza was that the Japanese had told us, yes, we're going to the Impreza, but not until you've won with a legacy. Won a rally or won the championship? Won the rally. Won the rally. Won the rally with that. And Colin won the last rally that that car was going. We, we would have been in a major problem if he hadn't won in New Zealand. Was Impreza already out there then? Was Impreza there and available and, and they were so building the, the them? The Impreza had been launched as a road car right. around about the same time. Right. It was, yeah. So that was a pure coincidence then? Or yeah. a, or an, or um, a... And we built it into our plans that we would run this car from Finland that year. Right. Yeah. So the cars were sent over to Australia and the other side of the world were legacies on the basis yeah. that we could take the How much car. crossover is there from legacy to Impreza? Um, a lot of the DNA, not much of the parts. Yeah. So the great thing about the Impreza for us compared to the legacy was that it was fundamentally the same uh, platform. Yeah. Group yeah. A regulations insisted that you must start with, yeah. a, so, with a standard shell. So we, get, we gained a more compact car to work with. Right. Yeah. And we gained uh, an upgrade in the engine with a new turbo and so on that unleashed another level. But um, we didn't have to relearn everything. Everything we learned with the legacy, we could transfer across. Now, being, being a smaller manufacturer, Subaru, were you able to influence the, the build of the road car to help you with the rally car? A Did you have bit, an advantage yes, there? a little bit. A small advantage, yeah. I mean... Um, Things like what? I wouldn't overstate it. Well, we were able to have long discussions about the, with the engine, making sure that it had the headroom. Things like, you know, please make sure the intercooler is big enough to cope. Still the same, so, still the same basic design. So, yeah, the boxer see, engine, new intercooler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, bigger turbo. Yeah, yeah. And the gearbox and transmission the again. Fundamentally program. the same. Fundamentally the same. Yep, yeah. Which was your favourite car of the two? I guess it would have to be this. It was this because it was more yeah, just, technologically yeah, advanced. Yeah, the very, very, very first shakedown, um, which we used to do at Myra in those days. Literally, like the first lap driving round, I sort of thought, mm, mm. I think we're onto something. We're yeah, onto something. you can see. And then, as soon as we we took the car to the first test in Finland, we did a back to back between the two cars. But before we'd even done the back to back, as soon as Ari drove this car yeah. down a gravel road in Finland, who was your it was who clear. was your benchmark test driver? Who would you go to for? You know, if you wanted, if you wanted data, I mean, Colin was probably one of the quickest guys to go to the point. Yes, Colin wasn't the one for the final detail. Carlos, but if you were, yeah, Carlos would have been the man to decide whether the bump stop should be two millimeters shorter or something. But if you wanted that first impression, is this a good car? Are we going in the right direction? What do you need to do to make it go faster? Colin was great in that era. Now, so, you had a fantastic year with Subaru. Mm. Wonderful relationship, wasn't it? Yep. But then it sort of came to an end. And then we went on to Mini. Yep. Uh, yep. What, what another fantastic challenge for you as yep. an engineer. Yep. And, you know, built just down the road in Oxford. Yep. What, what, what did that bring? And a mass-produced car, was that was, more difficult? That was our first almost clean sheet of paper project for a right. long time as a rally car. Right. And I think everybody involved in it really enjoyed doing it. So from an engineering point of view, this was a great project. Completely different. Com completely, completely different. Completely different. So this is now, so like everybody else... World Rally Car started with a clean sheet of paper. So when we, if you think about the history, when we started with the legacy, the sort of boxer engine and, yeah. and so on, we're, we were happy. Yeah. But once you, once you got World Rally Cars with the freedom to start taking the transverse layout yeah. and exploit it, we were at a disadvantage. The weight distribution of a, of a legacy and an evening pressure is too far to the front, yeah, and we weren't able to kind of compact it and so on. So this car was great for us to do. For the first time, we got a clean sheet of paper and a transverse yeah. engine. Um, so 
it was a really good, interesting so that's, project that, to do. Correct me now, that's the gearbox? Yep. There's the centre diff. No, yep. what, that's yeah, yep. the centre diff. Yep. That's the drive shaft going to the front wheel. Yep. And then there's a drive shaft going to the back, yep. to a diff in the back, yep. and putting drive to the yep. rear wheels. Yep. So very, very, much, very compact. Much more compact compared to the... And series. when you look at it, the drive line, the engine virtually is behind the back of the front wheels. Yeah. Whereas so the Subaru would be the engine would be out, would here. Be out here. So all yeah. that all that data you've got and all that way you've been working and all that yeah. thinking you'd been doing with Subaru, you now yep. But with you the have to read, kind of train and re um, think to some extent, yeah. Well, and how involved yeah. were were Mini in 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 this build? They, then they helped a lot with the powertrain. The right. powertrain is basically. Uh, and what engine is that then? That's a mini engine. That's the mini, I think they call it the Prince engine in right. those days. There's okay. probably a code number, okay. code name for it. And that it was, was produced shared here? with Peugeot. Oh shit, was it? Yeah, yeah so that was That's that, an interesting in fact. production, that was a shared project between BMW and Peugeot. Right. Now the big sad thing about this project, it never got yeah. the mileage. That, that's it that's was why allowed. I sort of separated the, the engineering of the yes. project was great fun. You never really got to stretch your legs with it. No, they, was that a, was that a mini decision? Was that a financial it was, decision? It was, it was a just... mini stroke BMW decision. We barely finished the first phase of development. We hadn't even got to our first World Championship rally before we were told that it wasn't going to be continue. the project. And I think we could have won. Yeah. If we if we'd even completed the first phase of the project. I think we could have been fully, fully competitive. Very, very, very frustrating, as it you was say. frustrating, yeah. We never quite got there. I tell you what I think is fantastic is the chrome door handles. Oh, right, OK. Who decided on them? Oh, that, that, the look of the car is mini. Is mini. Yeah. Mini, the, 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 um... So what's the future, then? So the future? The oh, future. Right. OK. I mean, you've got those Bahrain so, things over there. Yep. Incredible things. Half a ton of fuel. Yeah, 540 yeah. litres. Yep. Is the future for the moment in rallying terms, in off-road terms, is for us Dakar. Right. Yeah, and cross-country. On the racing side, yes. obviously, we've got Aston Martin Racing, right. GT programmes. Right. And maybe, hopefully, we'll be going back to win Le Mans one day right. and so on. Right. So we, we, it's not a WRC future at the moment. Right. Yeah, but... Um, is there any talk of Subaru coming back? There's talk of Subaru. You have know, you spoke well to... Have you spoke I, to... No, no, not... You have not no, seen no plans no, yet? No, no. We, we have an ongoing relationship with Subaru of America. Obviously, you must have a new relationship yep. to be produced in these... This is based on a car from the era, but the powertrain, the suspension, the tyres... How many bags of sugar would I have to part with to buy one of these? Um, how many bags of sugar can you get for half a million quid? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> God. Let's what move on. What a lot of sugar, I don't know. Honestly. 500,000? Five, yeah. No way. 460 plus VAT, I think. The... Oh, remember the VAT, yeah. yeah. Remember yeah. the good old government. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's incredible. But it's worth every penny. Is it? Oh. What's that it will, called? That What's it called? That will bring a, a P25. That will bring a smile to your face. What we've tried to do is to kind of keep it through to its heritage. DNA. So, so when you drive it on a twisty, bumpy tarmac road, yeah. it's great fun. Fantastic. If you take it to Silverstone, yeah, it's still yeah, impressive, yeah, yeah. But, but it's kind of... Yeah, yeah but you, if, you're, if that's what you want... Go Have on, you been heavily involved in that yeah, then? Yeah. 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 yeah, it's been great fun. Fantastic. Now then... Go on, then. This is built to drive over the sand dunes. It, so it's a, it's a space frame chassis. It's space basically frame chassis. It's a roll cage with panels yep. put on top of it, yeah? Yep. But how much does it weigh when it's fully laden? When it's, it's on the start line, it's two and a half tonnes. Two and a half tonne. Yeah. Completely different project for you, then. Completely different, yeah. Nothing, well, I was going to say it's nothing like a rally car. It's a rally car. Yeah. It, and it drives like a rally car. Does it's it? It's just a big one. But yeah. the engine is what a Ford it's V6. A, this is a V6, three and a half litre V6. Is that yeah. a very strong engine? Is that your yeah, choice of engine then, or um, within the regulations? Why, yeah, why did you go for to that engine? It, because um, the regulations kind of push you that way. They, right. uh, we could have chosen any engine. No, you know, to where, the how do you get a reliable four hundred horsepower engine from a production? You go to Ford. Engine. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you go to good old Henry. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to save the planet now, right? Yep. So wouldn't it have been better to stick some electric motors in here and put some batteries in the boot and have a little man in the middle of the desert with batteries to replace? With the current technology, the range of a 
EV of this performance would be probably in the desert 30 kilometers and we did 500 kilometer so stages. It's not going to work. There's no so way. Even no if way. you go then to maybe if you go to you know 100 kilowatt hour battery, you might get 50 kilometers. Yeah. There's, but, a, there's, know, there's a car over there with a petrol tank open. Can, can we just go and have a look inside yeah, it? I'm just you. fascinated. Yep. So you imagine putting yeah. the, f a meat bag just in the back of your car. It must have a hell of a difference. It, it makes it, oh, the car's... Fuel, fuel the strategy must be massive. The car's completely different um, between the start and the end that's, of the stage. That's, that's, that's inside the fuel it. tank. That's inside that the, the tank. That is the tank. That is the tank. Petrol's in there. Splush, 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 splush. <laughs> look at all these electrical connections and tanks and bits. Oh, God, I wouldn't get in there if you paid me for all the tea in China. <laughs> it's frightening. And, and, you know, you've been here, you said, since 90... What did you say you started? 80... When did you start? 84, started? I started 84. Here, yeah. 40 years next 40 year. 40 years. Where's the motivation? Why aren't you in the south of France with your speedboat? Well, two sides of it. One is I love the competition. Yeah. Yeah. And the other is that these days I get to cherry-pick what I get involved in a little bit. Yeah. And so I get involved in the stuff that I'm interested in. Yeah, so the technology, the engineering interests me particularly the how do you win yeah. side of it. Um, and uh, luckily, there are plenty of people that want to do the hard work. And you get um, the opportunity so I get the opportunity to take to those cars down to so, Myra. Yeah, exactly. Does that still give you a So I get the chance to do the bits that I'm into. I get the chance to get involved in P25. I get a chance to go to the Morocco to get involved in the test. What and do you drive on the road? What do I drive on the road? An, uh, an M6. An M6. Yeah. And what have you got in your garage? Not much. Oh, no? No, no. No toys? No, no toys. Uh, Charles bike? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. What make? Uh, Sherco. Sherco. Yeah. Four stroke or a two stroke? Two stroke. Two stroke. Yeah. And that's it? That's it. Oh. That's the only toy I've got I can think of. Lawn mower. <laughs> uh, an old tractor. Sit on. An old tractor. Oh, old tractors. Don't yeah. start on old tractors. Yeah. Hey, Lappy, it's been fantastic to talk to you. Really Pleasure. great. Thank you very much. And Pleasure. That, that interest, and you must wear off on other people and, and inspire them. And that's what this job is about, is inspiring other people, isn't it? Yeah. It, Lovely. You have to have the motivation. If, you, if it's just work, it's not going to work. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, my whiskers did not adre in America. I'm holiday back. I got nessie die, but in don't lowry pro drivey welder a kairma. I got whiskers. I don't go with you when in all in a. Or 1997, yeah, yeah. Oh, I went to America, I'm doing I went to Aros in America. I'm So the well, bullshit stops here, boys. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, Kovia, Dim just to be on Build Your Arms in there. Well, that's a technically well than in one. My pro driver, Lee Mauer, and today, again, to boys, again, to void the ring jam, again, to void the gearbox, void the wires, and we I basically am quite near them, sitting in a rally team. I think Kel Popeth and Dora today are in. I would invite that in Adelaide's car to help. Granda, who knows the your car all that we made all in a red egg and a body style of man. I guess we didn't have any Portugal's doing 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 the shows doing yamane. We had any Portugal we didn't ever car near with a fourteen. A, yeah, a four yeah. door. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would invite so who knows the who knows the all that hein. I actually I see them me Kenya ever hun. Uh, Stevie Middleton and friendy at the red egg. Well, number one. Ac uh, SE, Aros and all, he will do your car, um, Portugal. I'm going to get a look on in the Angus. And I'm sure you're happy when I got on died. Erbin, Erbin, nothing new at the Cairo, ma. Yeah. And these sorts of people are never, ever, ever Japanese. I got on Gashi Naid, but they were Cairo, ma. And they did ultra lot of people. Can I have a pin or bonnet, whisk? Put pin. Oh. Dalla bonnet. I'm opening it. Do you have any need on that? Yeah, yeah, well, they had yeah. to cover your car and the turn around and to cover your perfect. Bidi Hannes on there, Bidi, they might get a box, they might turbo, they might perfect. Well, do you want to do that? No, 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 Ti sa sumidu hen vilku for, sumidu jo for behund, vel? Så oid hun en grevæk kær lot. Og der er en gine mujer på hun en sejr på hun i Kenya. Oid Kenya er altid jo den dag, der er ikke helt jo. Det er bare med det ene. Så oid der er en gine, der er bæren, der er i rette gal altid jo dag. Så oid bedt mig ikke bæren, der er mujer compression og nej, der er hun af. Bedt bedt hun bæren, hvad er det, bedt klæs? Just just catch tank jo, nej. Bare bedt oid der er en gine i misjø. Yeah. Oid en hurtig jo bæren, hvad er det? Ti går der en side klæs, nej, på min klæn, og ti går der en jo, hvad? I will have a beep and a tinol, my will be money, my detect tinol, and I got some. So we tell you, and so we're in a good thing to go, Vogue, Lavana, 
Mae'r injan yn bryddio achari bach yn drwm. Mae'r injan yn cymryd i ti newid y terbwt e. Do fewn 50 munud sefyd, terbwt gan. O, oh, ysys, dwi'n i'n rhedeg ymwneud yn sanfer am syniad ei gwir. Ne, o'n i'n tri am achos o'n boeth, o'n i'n misio llosgi nhw ilo. O, oh, ne, dweud y gwir, wylid i heim fideo na i er yr aris i rhywbryd yn newid i'r un. A dweud y gwir, sa ti'n newid yn tia dwi'n diw, sa ti'n mynd i'n mynd i'n saith munud. O, sa ti'n chwing, Peter Bolton oedd yna, quick fits ar bob beth arall, dim O, hen bitio e'n job o'n i'n dweud i gwir. Pam? Os, wel, ti'n mwyn nhw'n dod yn erbyn y siasi lega... Ac ydych chi'n ddim yn ffordd yna? Oedd yna, oedd yna. Os wylid i ar y siasi i'r eilaf yna, oedd yna i'n ei sgolop bech yna i, fe'n neud i'n hawsa chi'n ei dynnu plygs allan. Ond ti'n gwybod be, diwedd dyrdd fel ar ein rali fel um, Monte Carlo, dyda, hen bitio gychwyn yn y bore, yeah. sa boys yn gofod niwy plygs yn y nos. I wneud rhoi fel Cold Star Plugs. Cold Star Plugs, fe. Rhoi wedyn yn y bore, yeah. pan sy'n car yn dod y 10 munud sefyll yeah. na. Newid plugs. Newid plugs yn ôl. A ti'n gwybod be, oedd y driver a co-driver, a spark plugs efo nhw'n y car, yeah. i fynd i pac ffermau i gychwyn y car yn y bore. A fy sy'n nhw, dyn yn bron ffeil i cychwyn, yeah. olio'r plugs, sy'n nhw'n gyrru newid y plugs yna. So, sawl tro, me Richard ac... ac, ac uh, um, Robert. Robert am sy'n nhw, wedi gofod newid plugs, ti'n mod. Be ar, be ar, o ti'n gallu dweud yma car yma. Wa, well, ti'n mod. Allai ddim gweld yw a'n dweud i gwir yn de, ond um, ti'n mod, ers dalwn bi oedden ni'n oed, oedden ni'n sgwenni ar bartiau ti'n mod, yeah. achos o'n y gymaint ti'n mynd ymlaen na, yeah. falle sy'n rhywun sio benthig rhywbeth efo ti'n de, yeah. i fynd di'n oed, um, i fynd i gair arall. Yeah. So stopio nhw ddwy no, dim dwy no, mynd efo'r car yna. Ie, yeah, car arall. O ti'n rhaid eino, fel Richard Burns, Kenya, sa ti'n ddim sgwenni. So hwn yn flappy paddle box? Oedd? Hambrek bech. Oedd yn eisiau hang hambrek mawr? Ne, i gan o bresiau yn, yn y silindr neud. Oedd o'n boi fawr, oedd o'n oedd dal yn doedd oedd y set right no. Oedd o'n, oedd o'n. Oedd, a wedyn ti'n bod be at ti'n sylwi, oedd o'n ist, oedd o'n istedd, o'r just be pringwel dros y top yma ti'n mwyn. Ie. Ie, ie. Ne, a hwn, mae hwn, yn ffynna gair neud ystod i gwir hwn. Be si yn y bwta? Gen i gilwg, dwi'n mwyn cofio. Ie, si mwyn yn drymach na ni'n cofio fe. Oh, yeah. Na ti sper, mae yna'n dweud, ffan y dank mawr, ar ti wahaniaeth arall i dy gair RSID ar y gair Finland, dweud. Yn dweud, mae tank, tank mawr, ti'n bod, mae hwn i gyd yn extra ar hwn. Hei, da ti'n arall, gen i fi ddangos un peth arall i ti. Wle car cofanco, fi hwnna si ar y wal y llun. Ie, ie, ie. Fi fildio hwnna. O, ie, hwnna ar y wal, fan yna, fan yna. Australia. Es i Australia fe hwnna, ar jump yna, dwi'n mynd, dwi'n falle ti'n gwybod, bynnings, bynnings. Ti'n mynd dod at gofion. Pleser yn ôl dweud gwir, ti'n mo. Nais gweld o'n dweud, dal ma, a mi'n cyflwr i ffernol o dde. A mi'n gwybod bod o'n ma'n un, achos o hwn yn gair special ofna, dweud. O, ti'n meddwl bod na chans i chael dod nôl do, do, ma? Dwi'n do, bod wedi hen wan, mos. Dwi'n dwi mwyn gyrru plygu lawr y godi wil, ma'n jyst. <laughs> en wedi gyrru hynt, dwi'n mwyn. Ie, si gwrs, ie. Diolch am awr. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for giving up the time. Right. I know your time is precious and you're very busy, but it's been fascinating and uh, it's been lovely to see the fantastic cars. If you invite me back to Newtown and I'll tell everyone what yeah, we're well, trying we, to do and we, sort out yeah, the Yeah, we, we haven't done it for a couple of years. We've given it a bit of a rest, but the, the plan is to try it. The problem is that because everybody's a little bit depressed with the whole situation, it's all doom and gloom, so we need a little bit yeah, of something to, we'll, well, to, 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 to brighten it up. Maybe we can come with some positive news. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, Raleigh Bay Kennedy Gun is doing that. It's, it's brought, a, a, it's brought a lot of um, interest and brought a lot of people out and people who, you know, older marshals and older people who were involved years ago are coming back and seeing the enjoyment. So, yeah. Yeah. And like I say, tell us what you're doing with Motorsport UK. That's important that. because um, people think you're sleeping. I can assure you I'm not. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>